Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. There's an imposter among us in this very room. <laughs> Does he want to come out and speak? Or must we suss him out? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I think I have a pretty good idea who it is. Yeah. Me who too. is it, Harry? <laughs> I'm going I'm I'm to give them the chance to speak up. <laughs> All right. We're going to give them about 15 seconds to speak up here. <laughs> well, I know it's not me because this meeting was planned before me, so... <laughs> only leaves a handful. <clears throat> Speedy, do you have anything to say? Uh, well, I don't know. You know, it's one day we might be imposters, the other day we might be friends. So I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe me, maybe not me. It's very hard to say. I don't know. So I Cousin, don't think so. Then you guys got me. anything to say? You're a, you're a wise man, Denzel. You know, very smart man. Very smart and wise man. You, you, you could chip in here, you know? <laughs> okay. There is some tension in this room. Right. And maybe we should get the tension to go away. Cousin, you got anything to say, Cousin? No. Guys, now I said that the imposter might be in this room. <laughs> but the reality is, he could still be asleep because he does live down here. And what? Now we have a lot of problems that have been adding up, you know. Some people doing things to people that consider their lovers, best friends, out of spite. Other people covering truths to people who have lied and backstabbed us in the back for the sake of liking them and feeling bad. Others, you know, lashing out at their friends because they cannot see in the mirror and realize they're fucking idiots, so he has to make them feel that way. Others who appear to be smart but then go leak information to other people realizing not everybody knows everything in this fucking city but then refuse to admit it and still pretend that they're smart. You know, a lot of fucking problems. A lot of fucking problems. Now we're going to start with the first one. Uh, we might need to kill Bane. No way. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. You want to explain why, want? Speedy? Uh, well, I don't know why we should kill him, but I can explain which I think you're referring to. Yes. All right. The floor is yours, uh, my man. Oi. So a while ago, I don't know how many, you know, how, how a while ago now, boys. But obviously, uh, Bane was in charge of a operation, correct? And mm -hmm. he was down here, you know what I mean? He wanted to have access, uh, which we gave, you know what I mean? Since, you know, Lang at that time, uh, trusted Bane and wanted him to have access to everything. So we made it comfortable for him. And he had some stuff that I, uh, you know, he gave me access to, get it? And uh, this stuff, you know, that we had a deal where it was going bad. I could take it and use it, sell it, you know, a little bit of it, stuff like that. And in return, he would take any equipment he wanted here so that it was, uh, you know, beneficial. Wait, what? Uh, Partnership, whatever you call it, you know, beneficial business, right? Now, then he got a brand new stuff. Why is he twisting right? this? Which I never, uh, I knew about it, you know, I was part of the experiment and everything, but uh, I did not have access to it. So I made a, so, you know, even I made a deal where, you know, I would just do the same thing as I did the first thing. I would take it and it was no problem. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Speedy, you told me he gave it to you. Yeah, he gave it to me. Okay, so what is the story? Did you pull it out the stash yourself, or did he hand it to yes. you? Yes. No, he gave it to me. Like, I took it out from the stash myself. 
Fucking Speedy, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I need you. Back up, Jens. Yeah. What you mean? Back, Back up, Jens. Right 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 What's that slapping? It's uh, it's clap lights. Oh, okay. Lights on. What the hell? You see uh, that? Five, four, three, two, one. Bye, bye, bye. Look at that. You guys see that flashlight? No, no, no. Speedy, Speedy. Yes, I can explain you... that. No, 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 no. Did he hand you the adrenaline, or did you steal it from the fucking stash? No, I did not steal it. I made a deal with him, and I took it as planned with a deal with him. What, That's what was I mean the deal? To me. The deal was, like before, he also gets, you know, the guns and more stuff, and I get to take the adrenaline. Like I so did you went to Bane, and you said, I want to take the adrenaline. You can take whatever you want. And he yes. said yes. Yes, which I did. And, you know, I think I took one or two only at that time. That's what I mean with, you know, gave it to me. Not officially, he did not physically give it to me. I don't know what to believe anymore, Speedy, because your story is completely different from the last story you told me. What you mean? It's the same thing I told you. He gave it to me. He gave me the shit, right? Okay, the problem is when I asked Bane if he gave Speedy adrenaline, he flat out told me no. I said Speedy just took it. Guys. The first thing I did when I saw the adrenaline, I told Bane and I made the deal, same deal, like I did. If I didn't do it, then I would probably have asked you if I could grab it, you know what I mean? The thing is, this deal is, is just flat out wrong anyway. So. Well, the deal is flat out wrong, yeah, and the problem is, is, okay guys, the problem is Speedy covered for Bane's ass for months. And that's, when, me and, him, good, when me and him got at each other's throats on Friday, he finally reached a boiling point where he admitted to me the lies he first told me to keep Bane alive. Yes, I did, boys. I, I did do that. But it was, you know, it was, I felt bad for Bane uh, when I, you know, when I saw him and uh, Lango, you know what I mean? Lango hard at Bane and stuff. So I was like, oh, shit, if he knows about the, you know, that's why I said I took it. Because I was like, if, I, if he knew about the, you know, that Bane gave me the permission, then he probably will take care of him. And I felt bad. At that point, I did not know that. Bane was already out of the operation. You know, I was just like, you know, I was trying to be a friend and not a snake. You know what I mean? Just be like, I took it. Fuck it. I take the blame. You were and, you a know. friend to a snake and snake the friend. That's what you did, Speedy. Uh, well, you know, my intentions was good. I was trying to save a human being and rather take the fall because, you know, like if I'm a friend and shit is really bad, you know, I'd at least, you know what I mean? I tried to, you know, be a good friend. Can I add something to this uh, situation, if you don't mind? Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't had, really had a chance to inform everyone, but uh, I did have to remove Bane's keys from Hero Wine. Um, got some information from all the people involved that Bane did a drop to Benji and didn't wear a disguise or mask his voice. When? I'm not sure. If, when? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I don't know when. It was a while ago, but even still, you know, it's, uh, it wasn't recent. You know, I think it was when, obviously, he was in charge of the operation, so it could have been months ago. But, you wow. know, I, 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 had to, I had to remove him off, you know? Okay, so it wasn't recent. You made that sound like that happened, like, yesterday. No, no, I didn't. Oh, just the way you I worded mean, it. The, it. It did come off that way, Harry. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, it did. It did come off that way. So this, this was when he, back when he was running the operation, though, right? Yeah, I mean, but it's still bad. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's very bad. I don't know why the fuck Bane did that. I mean, I mean they, the, the bigger point here is uh, yeah. Bane lied straight up to my face. If yeah. uh, if Speedy uh, isn't lying, which I don't think he is. But, but uh, with all due respect, you know, we normally joke and stuff. But why the fuck would I randomly lie about Bane? Like, you know what I mean? I have nothing against well, that's Bane. Wrong. So that's I literally what I just said, that? you motherfucker. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, Bane lied to my face when I asked him, did you give Speed the adrenaline? He told me no, he would not do that. Apparently, they worked out a deal where uh, that did happen. Um, and then after fucking that up, uh, Bane disappeared to, I guess, go dig a hole uh, somewhere up north. Has not seen since. Well, I here's haven't the... seen him hang around the roosters. Yeah. But there's a reason why he would have made Recently? an exit, because he probably knew that he kind of fucked up. Yeah, I mean, I think the note that he left and everything was very strange, uh, and the way he did it, 
I think, it, uh, you know, came with a lot of guilt. And I think, uh, I mean, it was a smart angle, honestly, to, to play the admitting fault and then hoping for another chance when he returns. But then, obviously, a lot more things came to light after that note, right? So, uh, it's just things to think about. Uh, Bain will no longer have a access to Bangladesh. He'll be removed from everything. I do not know the man anymore. I do not trust the man anymore. Mm. All right. That's crazy. You know, you have a little insight. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy. I never, I never thought Bane would. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I never thought so either. But to be fair, I also think it's come. I, I, a lot of it compounds into why this resulted with Bane. I think I put too much trust into him when he was very yeah. inexperienced, and I never really saw that. I kind of looked up to him a lot. lot. Though I feel like, like, I feel like I, you know, we trust someone. And then, like, goes really, really well. And then fucking boom. It just all unfolds. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Now, I have a follow-up uh, question there. Now, okay. is, uh, you know, should he be, you know, taken out because of, uh, you, you think it's a chance that he might leak, you know, the secret place to others? Not that he's no longer I mean, that's, technically. that's the question, right? Is right. I don't know. Zay is in the same. Uh, sorry, Bane is in the same position as Zay, uh, where I've known them for years. They've never done anything to really oppose me against them until after I brought them in on everything. Then the fuck ups began, and then they both eventually left. Does that make sense? It's like, why not do that before I bring you in on everything? But uh, so he is on the same boat as Zay where he knows a lot. And uh, but I, I can't work with the guy anymore. It's just the way he went about everything. Uh, it was just uh, his reasons, I think, were valid. And I, and I get where he was coming from. But, uh, you know, this 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 ain't uh, this ain't coming in to work at Chipotle. OK, uh, we were we run some very. Uh, it's a very dark shit down here. Uh, it's a very vicious business that we're all in down here. Uh, it's a doggy dog world out here. Uh, but like I said, the problem that Post is now is that he knows everything. Everything. Yep. All he got to do is point fingers to Tijuana, you know what I'm saying? And fucking at least, you know, he fucked, fucked. Yeah. But uh, everybody just keep that in the back of your minds. If you do see the guy, please let me know. I would love to grab him and get to the bottom of everything. Moving on. Moving on to the next subject. Somebody, somebody in this room hired clowns to do something. I'm going to give that person an opportunity to speak. <laughs> then, Walang, I would love to. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me paint a little picture for you, know, you guys. Um, we are halfway through the election week. Things are very tense, very stressful. Not only are we trying to secure votes, we're also dealing with the wrath of the Simones. Um, it, it's... It's just been declared that the HOA and Lost, uh, you know, and Seaside are forming a coalition against, um, you know, CG. And during this whole time, I was working with CG to kind of trying to snap up, snatch, sorry, snatch up some Simone disciples, which has been very successful. <laughs> and my dear friend across the table, Lang, he tells me to flip the clowns. And I have that in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, what can I do? And uh, Mr. K, he asks me, you know, I want to give the clowns a million dollars to go fuck up HOA, and I want you to do it. <laughs> and I think to myself, boom, perfect opportunity. 
I go to the clowns. You know, because really, the only way you can flip the clowns and get them to vote is to offer them money. So I offer them a million dollars, make sure that they vote for Lang Buddha. And also, you know, I, I do what Mr. K requested. I asked them to, you know, unleash hell on the HOA. Only gave them uh, $250,000. And I asked them to give me evidence of, you know, what they did to the HOA. They didn't provide me with any. And after that, you know, the, the things with the clowns went downhill real quick. They turned on me, as you know, as, as to be expected. Right. And that's, right. that's the picture. It was very, very risky. But I'll be honest, I think some clowns might have actually voted for Lang Buddha, honestly. Especially since I gave him the cash. Can okay, you repeat the last part? I think some of the clowns would have voted for Lang Buddha. How about like mm. the part right after that one? Especially when I gave him 250K. Yeah, why wouldn't they vote? All right, Harry. Thank you for coming forth with the truth. Uh... It's not as bad as it originally did sound. I will give you that. But now we must move forward. Unless anyone's got any uh, any comments, questions, or concerns regarding this uh, situation. I will add, you know, it's, it was very risky. You know, I, I've been skirting the line of... I've been trying to dodge the HOA the best I could. I haven't you know, been combative with them, you know, I mostly just seaside. However, this, the this fuck you talking about Morningstar, it's a fucking thinking, you know, wave. We, we have such a good relationship with CG and they asked me to do this favor and I really just thought to myself like, who the fuck is going to believe the clowns anyway, you know? So it was risky oh. and then we you know, added the voting thing in there as well and I just kind of went for it. Hmm. Where the fuck's Adele? You head pop? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we will now be taking a small intermission session here. If you have to pee, get a drink of water, itch your ball sack, do it now. We'll wait for Denzel. Okay. All right, so let's get back to the subject at hand here. Harry, now you mentioned skirting the line. Mm-hmm. Now, interesting you bring that up. Because the next subject at hand here, and I'm going to let the person come forward and explain himself. Uh, details, information has come across the table of one of our boys here, our brothers, our family, did something to spite one of his brothers. <laughs> I'm going to give that person the opportunity to come forward and explain himself. <laughs> Is this me again? I think it's himself, right? Hey, Harry, if you feel like it's you, you know, feel free to bring up uh, what's on your mind, my friend. Actually, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, go back to silence for a little bit. Why is that, Harry? <laughs> I don't think it was me. You sure about that, Harry? <laughs> yes. You know, something uh, pertaining, uh, you know, the act of violence against an individual and uh, this person's only reason of wanting to do that was to spite someone. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I, I, spo I suppose I, I could speak on the matter, yes. The floor is yours, Harry Brown. Oh boy! Well, I guess time to paint another picture here. Let's uh, <laughs> let's rewind to uh, Thursday last week, a couple <laughs> of years back. You know, right? We uh, after many, many, many tedious, <laughs> horrendous meetings with Doctor Yu. You know, the four Musketeers are at their wits' end. 
with this guy. He keeps on calling up, you know, wants more meetings. You know, this, this particular day, someone wanted to get a little bit rusty. And, and someone at the table, you know, said, <laughs> handle this Dr. You meeting, boys. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling rusty. The four musketeers are now the three musketeers, and they go to the meeting <laughs> with Dr. You. And I personally had a realization about Serbia this whole time. <laughs> you know, I was fooled in thinking this man had some secret cool underground lab in Los Santos, but he doesn't. He <laughs> has to travel to Serbia for all his business, and I was livid at my realization how I've been tricked this entire time. And the three musketeers had a sidebar and decided that We ain't going to goddamn fucking Serbia. We're going to take this guy. We're going to keep him hostage. Keep him a prisoner of war. And he was going to do our bidding. And that's exactly what we did. <laughs> the guy yeah. asks... The guy asked for a fridge, I got him a fridge. He asked for a lead plated box, I got him a lead plated box. He asked for a stash, I got him a goddamn stash. Things were looking good. You know, things were looking up in the world. You know, we had a the only guy in the sea that could produce cocaineum, we had him. Yes, we did. Fast forward to Friday. We have our Cerberus meeting. We go to the roof. Lang tells the free musketeers that they're fucking stupid and that's the worst idea he's ever heard of. And he storms off in rage. Yes. <laughs> and leaves the free musketeers. The free musketeers try to continue their plan that they had all along. Dr. Yu was growing impatient. He'd been down in Speedy's basement for an entire year. <laughs> he was losing his patience and wanted us to hurry the fuck up. The free musketeer, <laughs> musketeers secured the cocaine. It was we, we had the bricks. There was one thing missing. <laughs> Uranium. Now, I, there's one part I was missing that on Thursday, the free musketeers actually found the uranium in a, in a secret location underground. It was, it was found. It wasn't taken. It wasn't touched. But we knew where it was. <laughs> and after speaking with Lando, we knew how to safely transport it. And I think, you know, the three musketeers were going to give it a shot on Friday. Since, you know, the fourth musketeer was, didn't seem to want to be involved in the whole thing. We proceeded cautiously. Right, we, right. We pulled up to the secret spot and the three musketeers uh, somehow had lost their keys and couldn't access the, the building. <laughs> At, what, uh, uh, at which point one of the musketeers, the shortest of the musketeers, lost his patience and started blasting 20 shots in one of the musketeers' son's car. Hold up. Wasn't there four musketeers at this point? Was there? Nothing. Just, just oh, finish the oh. fucking story. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm trying. Okay. There was, yeah, that's right, sorry. There was four musketeers. After this, you know, after many suggestions from the musketeers about, you know, how to, how to strike back and how the, if we did, it would start, you know, a world war and it would be the darkest timeline and we weren't going to do that. We were still left with a problem. <laughs> there was no uranium rods. And we had a goddamn doctor in the basement who was growing impatient. And without the uranium, he would be completely useless and serve no purpose. Now, unfortunately, the doctor that morning had been taken out of the basement by the guards and taken to a clothing store where he was able to acquire a hazmat suit. And he knew exactly roughly where he was. The four musketeers tried very hard to secure the uranium rods, but to no 
avail and as a collective group decided the best thing for the doctor would be to execute him and to cut him up in tiny pieces and throw him into a barrel of acid and one of the musketeers you know understanding that he could never strike out and hurt one of the family, one of the loved ones. He would never cross the line. <laughs> that instead, out of spite, he would execute someone that he could to prove a point <laughs> and to be spiteful. Because you can't hurt family. <laughs> and what was that point, Harry Brown? That is the point. The point that you can't hurt family but you can absolutely hurt other people. To Just spite point. the family, Harry Brown? Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming clean with that, Harry Brown. But you forgot the little part in your story, in your painting, Harry Brown. You forgot about the salesman who gave you your paintbrushes and the paint to paint this picture. Because without him, you'd be left with nothing but a blank canvas, Harry Brown. And that salesman is the same salesman you lashed out on due to spite. You ever think about that, Harry Brown? Yes, and personally, I have no issue with the salesman and I understood that the uranium wasn't mine. That's why I left the problem solving to Speedy because I it's not my uranium. I couldn't give a shit. It's not it mine the... to... Excuse me? I thought it was know. the Musketeers. Right, but we're, you know... I... Specific now, you know? Specific we're we're in specifics now. Sorry, sorry. Now... You see... You see, Sorry, I, I was just doing, you know, if you want me to be completely honest, when, when, when you said you were going to get rusty and you told us to take care of it and you'd gone to bed, I was just trying to spice things up a little bit and spice things up. I did. And we were all hoping, and I speak for everyone here, that on Friday you were going to join us with this complete wild, ridiculous shit. And it just didn't work out that way. Which brings us to our problem, although there's a few to bring up. But spicing things for the sake of spice is never usually the answer, Harry Brown. The and in understanding is, I, that. I did not act alone. I acted with the, the other with musketeers. The musketeers. And I yes. think the other musketeers should also put in their perspective here. Oh, 100%. Yes. Well, before the musketeers speak, you need to understand that the salesman, the painter who gave you these wonderful colors and these paint brushes to paint this very beautiful story you have told, was working for months and months to get these paint brushes and these colors. And he did not have to share that with anybody, Harry Brown. But what do they say? One for all and all for one. And that was the mantra he was operating by. He said, well, I've worked so very hard to obtain these colors and these paintbrushes. Why would I not share this with my musketeers? And in return, his painting was destroyed. The other musketeers able to speak? Well, just to also address another problem in this story is you forgot about the chat. What is that thing called in Lord of the Rings? The little thing, the the little uh, the little, little thing, the, chat, the little fucking goblin thing. What is it called again? Gollum. You ever heard of Gollum in Lord of the Rings? Mm-hmm. Well, he was also in this story. 
and the golem went by the name of Speedy. And this golem got so high, so very high, on the mystic leaves he found out in the enchanted forest that he came back to speak to the painter. And they went at each other for hours, yelling at the top of their lungs, but came to a conclusion at the very end to sleep on it until Monday. They agreed to not do anything, to not make a single move until Monday. But this golem was so high that he misunderstood the entire discussion. So when the painter went to sleep under the tree out in the forest for about 20 minutes, he woke up again to find out that nobody but him slept on it and actions were made without his awareness thanks to the golem who was too high to understand anything of what was going on <laughs> you made the golem speak the golem may speak well it is true i do love my precious but you see the golem wasn't high the golem was so much heated trying to save the musketeers and everybody combined again and he was trying to work with the painter to get the other musketeers and the painter all to agree to meet and get along that he realized that what the fuck is going on which he <laughs> actually said also in the conversation because he was like one and a half hour and he thought that on Monday, everybody was going to meet and talk about it. But he didn't think, like, he should save the scientists to Monday. He thought, you know, you, we get rid of the scientists and then the speak alchemist. about our problems on Monday. Oh, sorry, oh, the alchemist. And then speak about our problems on Monday. So that's why he did not. He told the other musketeers, like, we, have a, we can have a meeting on Monday. But he did not mention the part where the painter potentially wanted the scientists to be alive uh, because, you know, in the conversation, it was many things about dying and being alive and dying and being alive, which he, the golem, misunderstood. Now, the golem misunderstood a lot of things thanks to these herbs that he smoked down in this enchanted forest, but the golem also wanted to act out in malice and to hurt the painter because he heard the untold stories, the myths of the painter having a legendary key. And behind this door, riches beyond your wildest dreams. And this golem came up with a plan to steal this very key. Wait, what? <laughs> Who came up with a plan? The golem protest. The golem, I don't the think golem, that was the golem did, not, did not suggest to steal the key. The golem was talking how the painter always keep things over us, right? We should put, you know, I, the golem was suggestion, maybe, you know, keep it over him. He did not suggest to steal the key at all. I think, if I'm remembering correctly, didn't the golem suggest moving this, this the, the, the riches? Not stealing the key, moving the riches? Well, yes. the golem was brainstorming with his fellow musketeers. Not that he knew that one of them was taking it literally. Yes, and the Malam concocted these dark plans to betray the painter, one of his longest friends, one of his hardest workers. And in that, and in that, the painter found out, and he felt very betrayed by the Golem, although he realizes he is a Golem who is crazy. He's a Golem who's addicted to the enchanted herbs. He never thought the Golem would plot against him which caused the painter to go on a down spiral of chaos, no control, until he was reeled back in by the third musketeer. Go ahead, Denzel. What do you want me to say? Who the fuck is the painter? I'm the fucking painter. He's the painter. How do, how do you not know that he's not? This shit is so cool. He's literally the painter. No, he's not. Yeah, it's I, not cooked. I'm the fucking painter. It all makes sense. It literally all makes sense. He's the fucking golem. 
and you two were the fucking other there musketeers. There was three musketeers it's, it's, it's when really there was four musketeers the entire time. I thought there was five oh musketeers. No, there was no, 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 no. There was three, three musketeers, on, right? Guys. And then the fourth one joined, but the third exactly. musketeer was actually a golem the whole time. I did not keep exactly. up with this. Exactly. Come on. I want to I wanna say a few things. All right. Okay. I, one of the musketeers, along with Denzel, one of the musketeers, shut down the golems. Um, brainstorming, although we did listen to him and we did laugh, but we shut it down because we said it would, you know, cause bridges yeah. to be broken that could never be repaired and we don't want to go there. We don't want to. We don't want to do to, that. We don't want to do that. However, one of the musketeers felt very left out the fact that the painter had an hour and a half conversation with the golem. <laughs> And then another long meeting in Bangladesh with the other musketeer. <laughs> yeah, one of the musketeers was radio silence with the painter. <laughs> Even though the, this musketeer was probably one of the most level-headed and calm during the whole thing. Now you must understand that the painter is very in, easily influenced by paranoia and dark whispers. And the golem refused to relay any information to the musketeers or what they spoke in that mystic plane gave them no information and then when he woke up the golem disappeared and based on that assumption he thought the golem went back to the musketeers to let them know everything he spoke about with the painter and based on that he saw the results of the musketeers executing the alchemist and what he thought was out of spite due to the fact that he thought everybody was aware we we're going to sleep on this until fucking Monday. The, now, the uh, painter refused to communicate with this certain musketeer because the other musketeer was feeding him information on how this musketeer does not admire the painter anymore for who he is. <laughs> <laughs> and in that, the painter was heartbroken and wanted nothing to do with this musketeer anymore because the musketeer failed to realize how hard this painter worked to grab these paintbrushes and these paints to then hopefully paint a beautiful picture of cocaine and money with his fellow mates. Now, the painter went back to the inn after this long and treacherous day, realizing it was one of the worst days of his life. And he went to go lay down and brainstorm about what does he do moving forward. So he came up with a bright idea to bring all these fellow members to the dungeon chambers to discuss what transpired that day and to come up with a solution. Now, the only solution this painter was able to think of is we either all pledge absolute loyalty to one another, signed in blood, or we begin to untangle this web that goes deep between the painter, the musketeers, and the golem. For this web is becoming too tangled. One string is pulled one direction, it pulls 50 other strings with it. And for that is the reason as to why the painter, the golem, and its fellow musketeers has been running into so many problems. So it's now time to decide what the painter, the golem, and its fellow musketeers will do to prevent this from happening anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Right, right. The only musketeer that haven't spoken yet is Denzel, and it's. I'll go ahead. We welcome Please. Denzel to speak at the guild table. Uh, the musketeers did get one thing from the phone call between the golem and the painter, and it was. It wasn't golem a phone a call. They spoke back. on a mystic plane. Okay, Denzel. whatever, whatever. Well, golem has a very sweaty back, is what we got from that. Yes. Now, uh. 
I think that all of us at this table, not just the Musketeers, not, not, not just Gollum, not just the painter, need to remember that we're all family and that we all love one another and that when tensions get high, we just need to stop and breathe and remember we're all going to have each other's backs no matter what. So I think that moving forward, rather than detangle the web, that maybe we all swear loyalty to one another because no matter if it's the painter, the golem, the musketeers, or the cringe racer in the room, I'll always have it. What the fuck? Sorry. I love you. Too. It's okay. I love you too. I will always right. have everybody's back in this room, no matter what. Here, 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 here. Here, here. Come on, everybody. Just say it. Just say here, here. 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 It's like amen. Here, here. Here, here. here, here. Now, those are the only two paths that lies between this guild of the painter, the golem, and the fellow musketeers. Will they choose to keep intertwining these webs and coming down to a blood packed loyalty between one another? Or will they choose to start entangling the mess they potentially got themselves in? What is the decision we make here tonight? Are you guys raising your hands or making a decision? I can't tell. I make, I'm raising my hand because I do. The golem have something to say to the painter. Okay, golem. The golem speaks freely now. I hope the painter uh, do not take it the wrong way. <laughs> the golem. Golem, before you speak, just understand we spoke for about an hour now. Work through everything in this enchanted story. Please do not ruin it. <laughs> yes. The golem is not trying to ruin everything. The golem uh, loves everybody too in this room. He never <laughs> likes to say it because he's an emotional man who likes to cry in the shower, not outside <laughs> of the shower. But the point is, yeah. the golem also, the golem sometimes do miss the ring, always thinks about the ring, but he also do want to have the painter to sometimes also, before he brushes off the paint, he looks at the paint and thinks, hmm, maybe the musketeers and the golem choose this different paint. It might be a bad paint, but I'm gonna take a look at it. That's all the golem wishes so that the bond between the painter and the golem and the musketeers will be never stopped, just like it happened for years. Yes, but the Gollum must understand that this does not excuse any dark action the Gollum takes. The painter cannot simply understand every painting, for a painting has a thousand different meanings, Gollum. And Gollum nobody is perfect. <laughs> now, what, is, what, do, what do we decide here, right now, starting with the Gollum? The Gollum used to be in the Sauron's army when they took him in. They took him in and he was hostage for years and he felt trapped in the mountains. He tried to escape many times, but he couldn't. But lucky enough, the Gollum managed to escape the barrio, the mountains of the barrio. <laughs> and, well, he didn't do it because he didn't do it because, you know, he, he hated Mordor. He did it because he loved the painter and the fellow musketeers. He did it because he could have freedom. He did it so he could be closer to the musketeers and the painter. So the Gollum, even though he likes to think about the ring much, is still on the same, uh, same goal to be closer, like always with the painter and the musketeers and be... Uh, be blooded. What do you choose, Spiegel? <sighs> do you choose to untangle the web or the blood pact? Smeagol chooses Spiegel, the not blood Smeagol. pact. Schmeagol. Spiegel. 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 Spieg
the blood pact if the blood is pure. Understood. What about the first musketeer next to Spiegel? This musketeer thinks that we should follow the old ballads of three musketeers. And there's a saying there that we should all follow. And the saying is... All for one, and one for all. Or the other way around, I'm not sure. No, that was correct. The first musketeer has spoken. What about the second musketeer? The second musketeer... ...thinks... <laughs> ...that when... ...he is left to... Take care of a task. <laughs> he will take care of it in the best way he can. <laughs> Understanding that he may not always do the right thing, but he has been trusted to take care of it, and take care of it he will. <laughs> and the second musketeer is very ruthless and very reckless and sometimes very stupid, but he has always been like that. And that is who he is at his core, and he has to be accepted. And he will only... give his blood... if all this is taken into account. Yes, but the second musketeer must also take to account how easily these words can be abused. Now we go on to a side story, a very short one, to prove this point is the second musketeer would frequent a brothel with his boys at night and we would drink tons of mead and get very drunk and the second musketeer would always tell us a story about the two princesses who ran the castle and how he felt like these princesses felt invulnerable untouchable and can face no consequence and that's why this second musketeer felt like these princesses would always lash out make the wrong decisions, and do whatever they want, for they felt invulnerable. The painter, in a very, very drunk moment, had an epiphany. Is this musketeer projecting how he feels? Or does he operate out of truly pure intentions? Hmm. In this situation, on Friday, the second musketeer ad did absolutely act out of spite in voting to kill Dr. Yu. However, it was just one of four votes, and all other three votes concluded the same solution. Her and her. the painter understands that. The musketeer also did not know about leaving things until Monday. And therefore, the painter understood all this. The painter understood everything that transpired that day and has chose to move on from it only if he can gather his fellow mates in the guild dungeon and make them all do this blood pact that is pure and with good intent. And if that is everybody's intention, the painter will trust everybody to do what is best for them and their fellow mates in the guild. He will never question, even if they do fuck up. He will deal with it as long as he feels the intent was pure. Yes. I do have one question for the painter yes the second musketeer has concerns well speak them <laughs> the only real concern this the second musketeer was very calm and level-headed on friday because <laughs> he had no stakes in what transpired he understood that 
that the uranium was never his. However, he did see that, or was told that some of the uranium belonged to Gollum. Yes. Now, yes, and Gollum failed sorry. to mention oh. that the painter. Sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to say that the second musketeer and maybe the other musketeer, maybe all the musketeers, felt very bad for Gollum when his keys were removed and the Gollum could no longer take what he thought was his. Yes, but the Gollum and the musketeers must understand that sometimes this could be the dark one whispering into her ear because even the Gollum himself forgot that the painter was simply protecting the best interests of the painter and the Gollum because the Gollum and the painter have been working a very long time on a mystic art magic which will destroy the world once harnessed and in order to do so they would have needed all six rods of this uranium and to give it one to make cocanium will destroy the Gollum's dreams of destroying the world therefore he refused The Gollum did not know about this, but now he knows. Once again, the Gollum presenting to his fellow mates that he forgets a lot of shit somehow, even when it's drilled into his fucking head. <laughs> well, the Gollum knows that he was eight. <clears throat> Originally, the two got lost. Hmm? Three are missing. The guild only has five rods. Doctor, you... Or <clears throat> The alchemist allegedly had the other. And two missing on the streets. Somewhere yes. in the Midgard. Yes. Now, back to the Musketeer of Brown. Is there any other concerns you feel you need to bring up here at the table? Yes, there is. You see, the second musketeer sometimes, you know, when so the Alex. other fellow musketeers and the painter goes to bed, still has the goal of his day and is sometimes a very crazy person. And the second musketeer would like to know whether he will always be loved no matter, you know, how badly he messes up and needs to understand going forward that the musketeers and the painter will have his back before he accepts going forward. If not, the second musketeer That's might have to untangle the web <laughs> because he can't help but be himself and, and wants nothing more than to be accepted by his family. Can the bard interject? You know, the bard, the horse racer, listen. Fuck. The second musketeer needs to understand that he is free to do as he wishes as long as his intent is pure you see the painter has been trying to paint this picture to the second musketeer for weeks another side quest story the painter went on an adventure with an insane barbarian by the name of Otto and in this adventure Otto and the painter put together a massive bomb to blow up the kingdom of Hayes. And he decided to not involve any of his fellow mates, for he did not want to drag anybody into the potential blowback and consequences of his actions. The second musketeer must learn to keep the crazy shit he wants to do separate from the serious quests that him and his fellow mates go on. Once he can accept this, balance is restored. Yes, the second musketeer understands. Because the second musketeer did go off by himself and shoot the living fuck out of Seaside. So the, the, <laughs> the second musketeer does understand. <laughs> And you see, the mates and the painter do not give a shit because blowback never came to them. And as long as a second musketeer can keep it that way, what is there to worry about? <laughs> yes. So what does the second musketeer choose in this great adventure? He 
he chooses to stand tall like the wall he is <laughs> and continue defending the group, the family. Yes. Here, 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 here. Here, here. Here, here. All right, Third Musketeer, what is your decision? Uh, I think that, like I originally said, I, I believe that all three Musketeers, the painter, Gollum, the horse racer, we, uh, we all should be standing united. But I think if we go down this path, I think everybody, not just, I won't name names, but everybody needs to have full trust in everybody at this table. <laughs> there shouldn't be doubt for anybody at this table <laughs> to not freak out and do things without talking to everybody at the table. <laughs> have full trust in everybody <laughs> at this table moving forward. Here, here. <laughs> here, here. Here, here. Here, here. As long as the intent is always pure. <laughs> what is your decision, Third Musketeer? Well, my, my decision is for the blood pack. Here, here. Here, here. Now, horse racer, we understand that on this quest, this journey, the musketeers, the golem, and the painter have gone on. You fucked off to another land to breed and race with other horse racers. What is your opinion on this tale you have heard here today? <laughs> mm. As a horse racer, I'm always moving fast, <laughs> overlooking things I should slow down on. But as the horse racer, I'm quick to pick up on things, <laughs> know what direction to move in when it's needed. As being a horse racer, uh, a horse racer, uh, excuse me, I'm up high and can oversee a lot of things. There's one thing I can see is that the Gollum and the Musketeers and the Painter all have one thing in common. <laughs> and that one thing is what we all actually share. Imperfection. <laughs> no one's perfect. Here, here. make mistakes. <laughs> Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. As the horse racer, I need the three musketeers, the painter, and the golem to all understand that. There's a seat on the back of my horse for whenever you need it. <laughs> you ever need to get somewhere fast, I have your back. <laughs> Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. here, This concludes today's tale of the painter, the golem, the three musketeers, and the horse racer. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh. Here, here. I, here, here. I think we should do one more thing. Okay. Okay. I think we should each apologize <laughs> for one maybe mistake or oversight or action <laughs> starting with the golem moving around the table ending with the painter please <laughs> here, just so here. we can bury bury this in bangladesh and grab the door moving forward here here i agree golem hmm apology uh, the golem, go mm -hmm. well, the golem does apologize for getting sweaty on his back and uh, not remembering to relay all the information. And uh, yeah, now that's what the, the golem, you know, apologize for. And also for sometimes love, he, passion for his ring where he forgets stuff, but he means well. So the golem is sorry for the times where he forgets stuff. Here, here. Musketeer? I apologize for letting golem fuck up. 
and I promise I will take better care of him. Here, here. Here, here. Musketeer number two. Is sorry for wanting to kill the doctor out of spite to the painter. <laughs> and. Someone's got to make some fan art of this shit, chat. Please, also, I'm begging. I'll pay for being it. the bigger man and trying harder to reach out the painter to maybe fill in any miscommunications. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Is it my turn? Yes, third musketeer it is. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that... I'm sorry if I hurt anybody at this table in any sort of way. I did not mean to cause any harm to anybody at this table. So I apologize. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Uh, horse here, racer, here. you have anything to, you, you would like to say? Of course. As the horse racer, I'm going to apologize for leaving these lands and heading to Spain to produce some of the best horses I possibly could <laughs> for this family. But here, as the here. horse racer, I apologize not being here to give you a ride when you need it. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. here, here. here, here. Now, here, here. as the painter, I want to apologize to absolutely fucking nobody. Fucking no, I'm nobody. just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. As the painter, I would like to apologize to the third musketeer for misplacing my trust in him for a brief moment. To the Gollum for expecting him to relay information when he was having a good high and for ruining that high by bombarding him with information I needed him to relay. And to the second musketeer for not placing trust in him to make the right decisions when the painter is not around. I will do better in doing that as long as the intent is pure. <laughs> Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Now, what happens in Bangladesh stays in Bangladesh. The tale is over. We can move on now. 